Hey everyone, uh, today I just wanted to make a quick tutorial on how to make some nice, wide, thick, and lush super saws using citrus. So, citrus is actually pretty old. I think it came out uh, in 2004 or something like that. Uh, but rest assured, this doesn't make it bad by any means, even by today's standards. Uh, now, citrus is mostly known for being an FM synthesizer, which it is. However, it can also do a lot of things standard subtractive synths can do. It's often not as straightforward as those, since Citrus wasn't designed to do this uh, in the first place. Uh, but it's still totally possible. Plus, Citrus also provides much more control and uh, sort of flexibility at the voice architecture level and than most other subtractive synthesizers, to the point where it can also do some additive synthesis albeit not as hardcore as something like Harmer, for instance. Anyway, today, uh, as the title suggests, we will be utilizing the subtractive capabilities of Citrus and make some really nice uh, super saws. So let's get started. So here we have Citrus and we have the patch in question. I'm gonna play it a little bit of it for you. I'm just jamming stuff on my keyboard, but uh, you get you get the idea. So it sounds really nice, uh, really lush, as I said. And uh, yeah, let's go for it. So uh, we're gonna load a new instance of uh, Citrus, and we're gonna go to presets and hit default, which is just basically a sine wave. And we're gonna go into operator one and set it as a saw wave. Now, next thing, we're gonna put some unison voices, right? We're not gonna go all the way to nine. I think 8 sounds much better and less kind of washed out. You'll see what I mean. So next up, we're going to drop everything to 0 here, except for uh, unison volume, where we want that 200%. Phase all the way down, envelope variation all the way down, everything. We do this because we want to control each oscillator's phase, pitch, and panning individually, not through the main unison controls here. Next up, we're going to go to oversampling and increase it maybe 2x, 4x, depending on how uh, powerful your computer is. I'm just going to put it to 2x, it sounds fine. Uh, make sure render is set to exactly the same, so you'll get the exact same sound as what you can hear right now in your project. So let's go into operator 1. First off, we're going to go into the unison tab right there, and we're going to select pitch. And then we're going to delete this middle point right there. We just want a straight line all the way through. So this graph basically tells us we are changing the pitch for individual unison voices because this is the unison mapping tab and we're changing pitch. All those vertical lines represent each voice of unison. And since we have eight voices, we can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight voices of unison, so eight lines. What we're gonna do right now is increase this one to by 8%, so one, one step and make sure you have snapping enabled to do this easily and we're going to lower this one to minus eight percent as well now if you play the result it sounds horrible and that's fine don't worry about it we're gonna work on that the secret here is to lower pitch envelope amount so if we lower this to something like i don't know 250 cents or something maybe a little more depending this basically sets the range of any envelope or LFO modulating pitch. So now if you play uh, the result, it's much less uh, detuned, and this is what we want. However, it sounds really phasey, and not really good. So next up, we're going to go in the phase tab, and we're going to actually randomize the phase per unison voice. So to do this, let's just draw a line like this. So basically, this graph tells us that there could be any value randomly chosen for each voice for phase, for starting phase. Now, let's play it here. Much better. Now, next up, let's go into filter one. We are going to route operator one into filter one. So let's bring output back to zero by middle clicking on it. And let's put one into filter one. That's how the matrix works. Uh, if you have trouble understanding the matrix, I suggest you to read the manual, it's really well explained. Now we also want filter 1 to output, so let's raise the output of filter 1. So 1 goes in filter 1, filter 1 goes to output. 
Okay, so in the filter one tab, let's disable the filter for now. We don't need it. Now we're back to the same result as before. However, here, this is where we control the panning of the voices. So let's go into unison index mapping tab and go into pan. You'll see the same graph as for pitch that like we had before. Delete this middle point and we can basically set the panning for each voice. We want it as wide as possible. So voice one through eight will be 100% right and alternating between right and left all the way across. Next up, let's go into operator two. We're gonna have a second operator here. And we're gonna do the exact same thing as for operator one, but in the opposite direction as operator one. Now we also need to uh, lower pitch envelope amount to a reasonable value again, for it to sound nice. And let's route oscillator two into filter one as well. Let's mute operator one for now. Really nice. Let's increase the octave to four. Fantastic. Now let's go into randomizer phase. Remember, for the first operator, we had from minus 100 to plus 100. Let's do plus to minus this time. There you go. Now let's bring oscillator one back in the mix. And there you go, it sounds pretty nice, pretty wide, exactly like we want it to. Something else you can do is to add a little bit of randomization to pitch for each operator. Let's go into operator one and go randomizing and pitch. So we're gonna go here, right click on that point, type in value. Let's do 0 0.49. Might not seem like much, but it can make a pretty big difference at the end of the day. So let's increase this one at the end too. Right click, type in 0 0.51. There you go. And this adds a tiny bit of randomness to each voice's pitch. Let's do the same for operator two now. Again, we'll do the opposite as what we did before. Right click this point. We're gonna do 0 0.49. Right click this one, 0 0.51. And there we go. Lastly, let's set up our envelopes. So let's go into filter one. We're gonna go envelope uh, to the volume. First thing is to enable the envelope. Here we're gonna set the attack to zero and set this up right there. And the important thing we want here is some release. There you go, that sounds really nice. Let's tweak this a little bit. There you go. While we're at it, we're gonna set a filter too. So we can automate the filter, for instance, in our track. Let's go into vanilla low pass and set it to times one. Okay, that's nice. All right, so next we're gonna go into the cutoff tab and we're gonna do the envelope for the cutoff. So put this back to zero attack again, uh, but first remember to en enable it and let's do the exact same thing. Let's remove the, uh, the release here. We don't really need it. And there we go. We have a nice sort of plucky sound when the filter cutoff is set to minimum. And when we increase it, it's now fully opened. From there, we can do lots more, but this was just to give you a nice starting point for you to tweak things even further if you'd like. So there you go, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.